Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Welcome to the Work From Home edition of our Path of Exile announcement livestream. Thanks for joining us as we discuss all the details of the upcoming Path of Exile Scourge expansion, which releases on October 22nd for PC and October 27th on console. For today's livestream, Twitch drops are enabled. Check out the link below the stream for more information on how to claim your free Dragonfly Wings. First up, we'll showcase the trailer for Path of Exile Scourge. Then we'll take a deep dive through all the details of its Challenge League and rewards. After that, we'll talk about the improvements we're making to Path of Exile's endgame and the various types of new aspirational content we're adding for you to benchmark your best characters against. Next up, we'll talk about some big improvements to the passive skill tree and we'll reveal this expansion's new skills. After discussing some balance changes and the new guild quality of life features, we'll head into a live Q&A stream where I chat with community streamer Ziggy D. Oh, and after the Q&A, we'll post the entire expansion's patch notes. I'm proud to present the official trailer for Path of Exile Scourge. The day the demons found our world, the innocent were first to die. They approach your world, your grave class. We must take the fight to them. Embrace the power of chaos. Become more than mortal. Face the nightmare. They are endless. They are the Scourge. The Path of Exile Scourge expansion contains a lot of new content and features that we'll reveal to you today. Let's start with its namesake, the Scourge Challenge League. Upon leaving Lion Eyes Watch, you're startled by a figure appearing out of nowhere, trying to escape from something you can't see. She hands you a rusty looking device called the Blood Crucible and urges you to implant it into your body. As you play through each area in the Scourge Challenge League, the Blood Crucible fills with the blood spilled by monsters you have slain. Once it reaches a certain threshold, you're able to activate the device. This will instantly thrust you into a parallel reality, an alternate ray class where some form of apocalyptic event is occurring. This ray class is overrun by demons known as the Scourge. They're powerful, dangerous, and come in many forms. The more blood you have collected, the longer you can stay shifted into the parallel ray class. But the longer you stay, the more damage you'll take. When the Crucible's blood runs out or you choose to shift back, you are instantly returned to your original location in our ray class to continue your journey. So why enter an alternate reality to fight a horde of ravenous demons? The answer to that question is exactly what you expect from Path of Exile. You're not there to save the world, you're there to find cool items. You can put an item inside the Blood Crucible. While you are killing the Scourge, it absorbs corruption from the alternate ray class and focuses it onto the item. After enough kills, your item is ready to transform. When it does, it becomes corrupted and gains a pair of Scourged modifiers. One of these is a beneficial mod, and one is a detrimental mod. These Scourged mods are in addition to the regular explicit and implicit mods or enchantments on the item. 
There are many powerful beneficial mods available that can really improve your item. The detrimental mods can significantly raise the requirements of the item, penalize your character's stats such as resistances, or outright turn off various mechanics like the ability to deal fire damage or gain charges. The goal of the transformation process is to get a beneficial mod that makes your item a lot more powerful, while also rolling a detrimental mod that doesn't hurt your build much or at all. But if you get a combination you're unhappy with, then your item is not ruined. By putting it back in the Blood Crucible and killing even more monsters in the alternate ray cluster, you can transform it a second time, potentially getting a better pair of mods that overwrite the first. Equipment can be transformed up to three times, and each time it guarantees a minimum tier of beneficial and detrimental mods equal to the number of times it has been transformed. By the third tier, you can start to get some very powerful effects. The Blood Crucible works on already corrupted items, so it's possible to add Scourged mods to items that you thought couldn't be improved any further. Talking about corrupted items, you're going to need a way to modify their sockets. While in the alternate ray class, you can find tainted chromatic orbs, tainted jeweler's orbs, and tainted orbs of fusing, which work exactly the same as their regular counterparts but can only be used on corrupted items. Tainted orbs provide a significantly easier and cheaper way of modifying the sockets on your corrupted items than the crafting bench does. While it's obvious that scourged items can be among Path of Exile's most powerful endgame equipment, it's worth considering the huge impact that good scourge modifiers can have on your run through the campaign. In our testing, we often manage to scourge items that are far more powerful than leveling units. As you slay the scourge and other monsters while shifted, the Blood Crucible gains experience and can level up. You can allocate its skill points in its own passive skill screen, which allows it to specialize in many aspects such as unlocking additional item slots, faster item transformation, better transformation outcomes, the ability to transform unique items, and so on. It's possible to eventually allocate every single one of the Blood Crucible skills, but it requires a lot of demon slaying. Scourge's endgame is one where you control the level of risk and reward, or as we like to say in the business, it has a lot of player agency. Once you're exploring the Atlas of Worlds, you may gain the ability to place maps in the Blood Crucible alongside your equipment. When a map absorbs enough corruption and transforms, it gains a beneficial and detrimental effect in the same way that a piece of equipment does, but can also gain a modifier that changes the behavior of Scourge League in that map entirely. After all, when you combine two types of alternate realities together, the results are bound to be unpredictable. Maps can be transformed up to 10 times, increasing their risk and reward substantially each time. When a map is transformed a second or subsequent time, there's a chance that the new beneficial or detrimental modifiers stack alongside the existing ones, enhancing their power, or a chance that new modifiers are added. Be careful not to transform your maps too many times, of course, as they may become too dangerous to complete. Path of Exile Scourge introduces six new unique items, of which three have been added to the core drop pool, and three can be found in specific aspirational content that we'll reveal later in the livestream. Ulnatol's Vow is an amulet that effectively enables you to turn any six-linked body armor into a seven-link. Support gems you socket into this amulet apply to skills in your body armor. While specific mods on items have allowed players to create seven-link skills in the past, this amulet lets you choose whatever support gem you want, including corrupted or awakened ones. It's only possible to find this unique item in specific content that we'll reveal later in the livestream. The new Mage Blood Belt is one of the most powerful unique items to ever exist in Path of Exile. It permanently enables a number of your utility flasks, providing their benefits constantly with no work required on your part. This belt means that regardless of what your build is, you'll sustain your utility flasks during 100% of gameplay, even long boss fights. Mage Blood is in the core drop pool and is exceptionally rare. Early next year, we will release a huge overhaul of Path of Exile's Atlas of Worlds endgame in the 3.17 expansion. In the meantime though, our October Scourge expansion introduces a bunch of changes that speed up how quickly you can set up and progress through your Atlas. We're also introducing more types of ultra-challenging endgame content for top players who want to put their best characters to the test. In order to substantially shorten the length of the Atlas grind, we have reduced the number of regions from 8 to 4. This implicitly reduces the number of watchstones required from 32 to 16. We have also reduced the number of maps on the Atlas, so it's now approximately 100 plus the unique maps. 
We've rebalanced the bonuses for completing content so that by the time your atlas is fully unlocked, you'll receive a slightly higher level of benefit than you did before. Because the number of regions has been halved, so have the number of atlas passive trees. There are now four plus the uncharted realms. We've made each tree slightly larger and removed some less frequently used or duplicated skills. You'll still be awarded the same number of atlas passive skill points as before. With these changes, each map you play constitutes far more progress than it previously did. About half as much work is now required to reach Path of Exile's ultimate endgame. We've made some other changes to streamline the endgame also. For example, now when you unveil a modifier, all tiers of that modifier are immediately unlocked at the crafting bench. This applies to every veiled modifier, including the very rare ones. Many of Path of Exile's past leagues have an endgame component that is designed to challenge the best players with the best builds. Over time, more and more of Path of Exile's experienced players have managed to defeat the game's hardest content. Our most difficult endgame content doesn't pose as much of a challenge as it once did. In the Scourge expansion, we have added a set of new aspirational content, uber versions of Breach, Blight, Legion, an extension to Delirium's Simulacrum, and a revamp of Delve. Breach's endgame involves running Breach Stones, which can be placed in the map device to open portals to a Breach Lord's domain. For each Breach Lord, there are currently four tiers of Breach Stones, and you can upgrade between them using Blessings. Path of Exile Scourge introduces a new tier, Flawless Breach Stones. These can't be obtained via Blessings, but are instead found in the Maven Encounters where you fight the Breach Lords in their most challenging forms. These Flawless Breach Stones require a substantially more powerful character to complete, but have rewards appropriate for their difficulty. Existing Breach Stones now have two random modifiers, from a pool that doesn't include build disabling ones such as not being able to leech. And the new Flawless Breach Stones have four of these modifiers, which represents a significant jump in difficulty. They can drop special versions of the Grasping Male Body Armor, which has a specific Fractured modifier themed around the Breach Lord of that domain. The Ulnatol's Vow Unique Amulet we revealed earlier can only be obtained through Flawless Breach Stones. All Breach Stones have been modified so that the items you earn from monsters are now dropped in a spiral at your feet when you complete or fail the event. In addition, rare monsters and breach domains drop an additional random reward type, such as scarabs, maps, or divination cards, with flawless breach stones adding two additional reward types. All breach stones are far more rewarding than before. Blighted maps were previously our pinnacle blight content and could be anointed up to three times to increase their difficulty and rewards. In the Scourge expansion, while you're playing blighted maps, you may find a blight ravaged map. These have increased monster difficulty and are always monster level 85. They can be anointed up to nine times with up to three of any one type of anointment. These incredibly challenging encounters can also yield one of Scourge's powerful new unique items. In Legion, you can combine up to five Timeless Emblems to enter the Domain of Timeless Conflict. While playing the Domain in this expansion, you can find Unrelenting Emblems, which can be mixed and matched with Timeless Emblems for a substantially more challenging and rewarding encounter. Delirium Simulacrum encounter has been extended, with 10 additional waves of combat. As you can expect, these extremely difficult extra waves are very rewarding and feature escalating chances for a Delirium boss to spawn. With each wave you play, the Simulacrum now has increasing chances of dropping Cluster Jewels and past wave 20 Delirium unique items. Previously, you could only get a maximum of one Delirium unique item per Simulacrum, but now you can walk out with multiple high-value items such as Voices. Simulacrums not only represent a lot more value now, but also an opportunity to truly test your character against some of Path of Exile's hardest content. In addition, Delirium Orbs are now a lot more common, and Delirium's rewards have been improved due to less popular ones like Prophecy and Talisman being removed entirely. We've made quite a few changes to Delve in the Scourge expansion. The first change is that we have completely rebalanced the entire thing so it's just more rewarding and more challenging at earlier depths. In general, monsters scale to have more life but less damage than before. We've improved monster skills and bio modifiers to make deeper depths more challenging to go with their better rewards. Due to these changes, we've wiped the standard delve ladders but have retained your previous depth on your characters. To get back on the ladder, just play at whatever depth you are still able to complete. We've also improved the delve catch-up mechanic. Previously, if you entered delve for the first time at level 90, you'd be taken to a depth that is the equivalent of tier 1 maps now will be taken to the equivalent of tier 13 maps. This means that if you want, you can essentially ignore Delve until the late game rather than having to play as you go. 
we've increased the base sulfite cap from 600 to 1200. Underground cities are now more common and you'll encounter bosses more often, including all. You can rarely find fractured items with delve modifiers on them. We've also increased fossil and resonator availability throughout the Azurite mine. Fossil availability outside of Delve has been reduced. All resonators dropped are now chaotic resonators, with our chemical resonators not dropping anymore. We've also improved the least powerful fossils. It has been a long time since we've done a big rework of Path of Exile's iconic passive skill tree. The Scourge expansion includes quite a lot of changes, and before I list them, I want to emphasize that our goal here has been to keep the tree as similar to before as possible. All of your years of muscle memory will not be wasted. The tree will still feel like the back of your hand, despite our changes. While planning this rework, we examined every aspect of the passive skill tree. We reviewed and improved each of the tree's class start areas, we added new clusters of skills, improved existing ones, and concentrated power more directly on each skill's primary function. The process of doing this identified that many passive skills had niche stats that didn't matter to most characters or distracted away from the purpose of what the skill was trying to do. When we took niche stats away from a skill, we buffed the primary function of the skill so that it was more concentrated on one purpose. While I'm sure that powerful passive skills sound great to you, you're probably wondering what happened to all of those niche stats. You see, while we were doing this revamp, we realized that specific build-enabling niche stats appearing in specific locations on the tree actually constrained players' passive builds in quite severe ways. Players who wanted to get several specific niche stats often had little flexibility with the rest of their tree because they had to plan around getting to the specific clusters that had those niche stats in them. We decided we wanted to solve both problems at once here, to move niche stats off the main tree, but also to provide a way to get them, preferably from many different locations all over the passive skill tree. And that's how we came up with a passive mastery system. Outside of the class start locations, all passive skill clusters that have a notable passive in them now contain a passive mastery. When you allocate the first notable passive in each cluster, a mastery becomes available to allocate in that cluster. When you spend a passive skill point on the mastery, you can choose a specific stat to gain. This list is shared with all the clusters on the tree that have the same theme, so you can travel to any of them to get the stat you want. As you allocate a mastery stat, it's crossed off the list for that theme. This mastery system has essentially let us add hundreds of powerful new notable passives that you can access from all over the tree. In addition to the stats that we moved into masteries when consolidating power on the rest of the tree, we got to come up with a bunch of new interesting niche stuff to enable even more builds. We've also rebalanced a few keystone passives, changed the locations of some, and added six new keystones to the tree. Overall, Path of Exile's passive skill tree is now a lot more powerful, with concentrated power coming from core passives, and a selection of build-enabling niche stats available on Masteries for you to pick between. Path of Exile Scourge introduces a whole variety of new skill gems with many different purposes. Two of them are new concepts unlike anything we have done before. These ones are designed to immediately create entirely new builds that have a lot of potential. There's also a utility skill that will help characters stay alive, a variation on an existing skill gem, and six new gems designed for party play. Let's go through the new skills. Energy Blade is a new skill that transforms your melee weapons into, well, energy blades. A large portion of your energy shield is converted into the lightning damage that these blades deal. This opens up an entirely new melee energy shield archetype, where you want to stack as much energy shield as possible to get the most powerful blades you can. Conveniently, the defenses rework in this expansion is very compatible with this plan. Temporal Rift is a new utility skill that allows you to rewind your character's state by 4 seconds. After activating the skill, it starts storing your position, life, mana, and energy shield values every quarter second. When you use the skill again, you are rerun back to 4 seconds ago. The build shown here uses the Forbidden Right skill introduced in the last expansion. This skill does a lot of damage, but also hurts the caster when used. Temporal Rift allows this player to snapshot their full life orb, cast Forbidden Right a lot, and then revert back to full life to keep casting. Not only is Temporal Rift incredibly useful in hardcore mode for obvious reasons, or while exploring maps efficiently, but it also enables some interesting tricks with mana. Come to think of it, it'll be pretty cool in Delve as well if you don't mess up the timing. Temporal Rift also prevents Temporal Chains from affecting you while it is in use. Tornado is another new skill. 
As the name suggests, it creates a tornado that relentlessly moves towards enemies and pulses with damage. While the tornado is forming, you have a couple of seconds where it will absorb damage from projectiles you hit it with. Fire as many projectiles as you can into it during that period and it'll power up, greatly increasing its damage output. In the Expedition expansion, we introduced a skill called Explosive Concoction. Based on player feedback, we are improving the skill so that its projectiles are thrown faster, have a higher base crit chance, and have greater speed. Now that we feel that Explosive Concoction is sufficiently powerful, we are introducing a similar new skill called Poisonous Concoction. As the name implies, this one deals poison damage rather than fire damage, and consumes charges from your life flasks rather than your elemental flasks. Poisonous Concoction scales its damage based on how much life the consumed flasks recover, which encourages you to craft your flasks to take advantage of this. It's quite rare for us to introduce skills that only work for party play, but in the Scourge expansion we've created a set of six that function in similar ways but do different things. These link skills create a bond between you and a specific party member, providing a big benefit to them while they stay within range, but with the very important drawback that if they die, so do you. Soul Link protects your target by causing a percentage of damage they are dealt to be applied to your energy shield instead. If you have built a tanky character with a lot of energy shield, then you and your target will be protected by it. Protective Link grants your target a chance to block attacks that is equal to yours, and also grants some life gain on block to them. By default, the obvious use of this Link skill is to allow you to specialize in block, and then use it to protect an ally that is specialized in something else, like damage. But there are some cool tricks you might discover. For example, the Glancing Blows Keystone passive doubles your block chance, but changes that so that you still take some damage from blocked attacks. In conjunction with Protective Link though, your target will receive your doubled block chance, but won't receive the drawback. Intuitive Link is socketed alongside a spell on your character, and that spell is triggered from your target's location when they hit an enemy. This could be useful, for example, if you have a party member who's cycloning through enemies, and you can trigger your spells from within those packs of enemies without having to get close yourself. There are three other Link skills that we will reveal closer to release. As this expansion does include significant nerfs to Aura Bot characters who stack auras for the benefit of their party members, these Link skills give them a viable, more active playstyle. Link skills cannot normally be used with your minions, but we're adding a minion mastery to the passive skill tree that allows you to use Link skills with them. However, this has a high ongoing mana cost that is difficult to stay on top of. In Path of Exile Scourge, we've done a lot of balance work improving flasks, ailment mitigation, general character defenses, and elemental damage over time. We have made some changes to how stacking auras and curses works, and have buffed most awakened support gems. We've posted about the changes we intend in the last couple of weeks, and have been iterating on these changes based on testing and your feedback. We are posting the full Scourge patch notes after the Q&A portion of this livestream, so we'd encourage you to check out the full details of the balance changes there. We first introduced guilds alongside Path of Exile's initial release in October 2013. Our guild leaders and members have been patient for a very long time, and after eight years, we're rewarding that patience with a wave of guild quality of life features. As a game about items, the functional heart of a Path of Exile guild is its stash. You can finally control click items into and out of your guild stash and access other features such as the drop down list of stashes, drag and drop stash ordering, affinities, etc. We have also introduced guild versions of all of the types of premium stash tabs, so guilds can finally enjoy popular tabs such as currency or map tabs. While shared guild tabs are a little more expensive than individual tabs because of their server costs and development overhead, we have bundled all of the exotic ones together in a single discounted bundle for guilds that want to invest in the whole lot at once. We have also added the ability to export a CSV file of your guild stash activity log for convenient auditing. We wanted to pair functional with fun, so we have introduced guild hideouts. Guild leaders can select any in-game or microtransaction hideout that they have unlocked and create a guild hideout based on that template. These hideouts are a great place to hold guild meetings or to just have as a space for members to meet up between maps. If you're hanging out in your guild's hideout, you can use its map device as though it was your own. We understand that not everyone is in a guild, so there's one hideout-related feature that we wanted to mention. We have entirely removed the favor system from Path of Exile. From this expansion onwards, all hideout decorations that could previously be obtained with favor are now available to all players in unlimited quantities, both personal and guild hideouts. Now, there's nothing stopping you from making the hideout of your dreams. We've also added a system that allows you to filter decorations by tag because there are just so many available to you by default now. 
Alongside Path of Exile Scourge, we're introducing the expedition content from our last expansion into Path of Exile's core game, with a few adjustments. Expedition artifacts are no longer tradable items, which has two key effects. The first is that they are automatically collected as you complete expeditions, and the second is that all characters can now engage with the Kalgaro merchants without having to feel that their best plan is to trade the currency away to other players who may use it more efficiently than them. It's a difficult decision working out whether to make specific items tradable or not, but we feel that on balance, this new approach will solve several problems with the system. It's also worth noting that the currency items that allow you to re-roll the vendor's inventories are still tradable. You'll start finding expeditions from Act 6 onwards. There's an 8% chance for a map to contain an expedition, and they can be further augmented through investment in the appropriate Atlas passive skill tree. As we move new leagues to core, we will replace outdated obsolete content. In this case, Expedition replaces Parandus. Details are in the patch notes. While clicking on items is a critical part of playing an action RPG, there's a fine line before it becomes a chore, and we're trying hard to make sure that clicks on items come with appropriate reward. Expedition artifacts being automatically picked up isn't the only improvement we're making to reduce unnecessary clicks in this expansion. In order to make sure that each stack of currency items is worth a click, we're trying out a system where currency items drop less frequently, but in larger stack sizes. For example, Scrolls of Wisdom in the late game might drop one tenth of the time, but when they do, it'd be in stacks of 6 to 14. This means that the click that you will make will gain you a much more meaningful amount of currency at once. We have applied this to many different types of currency items, and the effect of the system gets larger as you get further into the game. In addition, we've had a look at instances where item drops happen simultaneously, and we've made it so that items that can drop in stacks will automatically do so. This includes at the end of delves, incursions, rituals, blight encounters, breach stones, and the simulacrum. We have also applied this approach to many chests and areas like splinter drops throughout Path of Exile. Before we move on to our final announcement and live Q&A, let's have a quick look at the new set of supporter packs that are available right now to celebrate the launch of Path of Exile Scourge and help fund ongoing development of Path of Exile. Based on player feedback, we've increased the value of the $30 and $60 supporter packs by adding $5 worth of points to each one. This means that you now receive the full value of what you spend in points, with the new sets of exclusive cosmetic microtransactions on top. These include armor sets, weapon skins, portals, shields, and helmet attachments. The Ancient Dread pack contains an exclusive pair of wings, and the Intrepid Liege pack contains an exclusive pet. These new packs each have three value tiers that you can upgrade between within their respective series. Thank you so much for your support. Purchases of these supporter packs make expansions like Scourge possible. Shortly we'll begin our Q&A and we'll answer your burning questions, but first, we have another quick announcement to make. In the Expedition League, we teamed up with Twitch Rivals to run our first ever Path of Exile Royale live tournament. This event saw our favorite content creators teaming up in pairs to compete for awesome prizes. We're excited to announce that following the launch of Path of Exile Scourge, we're doing it again. This time around, competitors will compete alone, but we've added a unique twist. Towards the end of the match, surviving players may encounter a brutal but rewarding boss fight, which could have significant strategic implications for how they play the match. There's $30,000 of cash on the line alongside some of Path of Exile's best microtransactions. Tune in on October 28th at twitch.tv slash twitchrivals to see who will decimate their competition. That concludes the reveal portion of this livestream. Keep an eye on our news next week as we reveal more details about the Scourge expansion. In the meantime, these reveals are already live on YouTube for you to link to your friends in case they miss the livestream. Please do so, and join us as we battle the Scourge alongside you next week. It's now time for the Q&A. If you have any questions about what we've shown you today, please get them ready because I'm about to be joined by Ziggy D as we answer your questions from Twitch chat, and after that, we'll be posting the full Path of Exile Scourge patch notes.